Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in. We're going to look at something called the Hornet, and more specifically the Hornet 2.0. And this comes from not necessarily a company per se, but a designer, a single individual, and that is Sean over at Tepe Design. So um, here is the Hornet 2.0 that we're going to take a look at. And this is a rather large uh, four inch knife, M390, carbon fiber. Um, it does a lot of things, I think, really well, um, especially for the price. So we will go through the specs, impressions, details, yada, yada. I've had this knife for a couple of months, I want to say, and I've actually carried it and used it a lot. And I've specifically carried it a lot at night, taking my dog for a walk, um, being a pretty large, you know, four inch blade with a, a really nice secure grip on the handle. Uh, this is kind of a good, you know, things go bump in the night or you're taking your dog for a walk type of night, type of knife, in fact. And uh, more so to potentially have to deal with wildlife than people, um, at least here in Arizona where I live. So a lot of wildlife, uh, a lot of big dangerous wildlife moving around at night. So anyways, um, don't want to ramble on too much. Let me show you guys what it ships with. It actually comes with uh, a case here and it has a suede... Um, a suede leather patch that you can either leave on the case or put on your patch wall or the roof of your truck or whatever. Got some uh, nylon on the back here. You could potentially hook it to a belt, I suppose, or strap it onto a bag with some molly webbing. Um, inside, uh, you have a branded pouch, uh, certificate of authenticity. So this one was made December. Christmas Eve 2019, some of the specs. Sticker, let me show you guys the extra hardware that it comes with um, so you can get an idea of the bearings. So we've got some multi-row ceramic bearings, uh, which certainly makes the action really nice. Extra screw, stop pin, pivot, and an extra washer. Obviously the uh, bearings right on the washers, not directly on the carbon fiber. So anyways, that's what it ships with. So um, I like the packaging, I think it's Nicely done, and let's get to the knife and let's jump into the specs. So, um, do have the Spartaco Paramilitary 2 and the Kershaw Dividend, uh, both of which are quite a bit smaller than this thing. So, uh, spec wise, we've got a 4 inch blade, 5 inch handle, 9 inch overall. Handle thickness at the widest portion is 0.59. So just about 0.6 there, but it is heavily contoured. So, um, you know, while 0.59 would generally be pretty thick, the fact that it's whoops so well contoured uh, gives it really nice grip, and it's more of a, a narrow grip as well. Does weigh in at 3.9 ounces, so under four ounces for a four-inch blade, uh, which is very cool. Flat grind again, blade still M390. Rockwell hardness. Um, so this, this initial batch, so here's the thing. The, the batch of these is coming in June 2020, which is uh, probably end of June 2020. We're about a month out from these being delivered from the factory producing them overseas. And so that's why I've waited till now to do the video. Initial, like on these, on some of the pre-production runs, the, they rock weld actually closer, 58, 59. Uh, Sean got back with the factory and said, hey, I want these rock welding at 60. So the production run, the, the heat treat should be a little bit harder. They should be coming in um, all just about at 60 instead of 58 to 59. So um, that's where it's supposed to rock well. You know, time will tell and testing and so forth. Uh, blade stock is coming in at 0.16. And again, this flat grind comes down to a, a pretty nice edge here. Um, let's grab the calipers real quick and see what the thickness behind the edge is because... I forgot to do that prior to the video. We're at zero. Right behind the edge. I'm going to call 0 0.24, 0 0.25, uh, right in line with a pair of two. So, um, yeah. So, you know, thickness is behind the edge is kind of in line with a pair of two using that flat grind. So it cuts well. Um, yeah, let's see what else we're looking at on the specs here. You already saw the multi-row ceramic bearings. It does utilize a nested liner lock, so you know you can't see the liner for the most part here. And 
there's the cutout to access the liner, which is very, very nice. It does have a flipper tab and oops, hit the camera and a thumb hole opening. So uh, again, a lot of nice things on this one. Um, I think he did a lot of things well. And there we go, camera's readjusted. All right, so that's that's kind of where we're at size-wise and the specs and so forth. Price, 250 bucks on these. The pre-order was a little bit less, but um, you know, once they do come, and, and when they do come in June, uh, here's one more size comparison, the 0452. I think it was this one, four and a quarter inch blade. I don't know. Another somewhat relevant size comparison if you do like larger knives. So, um, yeah. All right. So, again, when they come in June, a lot of them have sold in the pre-order. He will have a handful of these in carbon fiber. He will have a handful of the smaller version, the Hornet 1, which was a 3.5-inch blade in titanium and G10. Um, his other model, the model, the Killage, he'll have some of those. Um, and then he will have a very small handful, five or six, done in fat, uh, fat carbon, carbon fiber, which is some pretty exotic, pretty cool specialty carbon fiber. Price will be significantly higher on those because that material is quite expensive. So um, they, he lost about half the material in the machining process. But uh, anyways, so let's take a look at the blade stock here. I apologize, the blade's a little bit dirty stonewashed, kind of this double harpoon. Um, some people on my Instagram are saying it looks like something from Gavco and kind of, sort of, but not really. Um, he certainly didn't have that in mind with the design. This one's number 15. Um, got a kind of upswept ramp here. Jimping is effective and since you have so much handle to grip, you know, with my XL glove, I can actually use the jimping on this effectively. Um, so that's really well designed. Again, larger hands, this is a knife that's really going to work well for you. So let's take a look at the action. Really smooth here on the multi-row ceramic bearings and the opening. I mean, the, the, the detent strength and the depth of the detent ball, everything's pretty well tuned. So here's thumb. So I can open this every way that it's intended to be opened, um, and it, it does very well in all those ways, so the action is, um, it's not even generalized, it's optimized for every opening method. So if I want to, you know, if I want to purposefully make it not open all the way I can, but any mild attempt, and this thing's flying open with the flipper tab, so really nice action. Um, I like the blade shape. It's thin enough behind the edge. It's a very large blade, again, and uh, jimping's good. Uh, no sharp edges really anywhere except for the one that's intended. Secondary bevel, nice and clean. And I should probably give you guys some close-ups real quick here. Talk about the clip in a second. Backspacer, carbon fiber, get a lanyard pin back there or post. So, yeah. All right, so that's the blade for the most part. Uh, again, the handles are done in carbon fiber, and um, all the contouring is actually done by hand. He was posting pictures the factory sent him of them working on these, and I really like the handles. Very comfortable. Uh, no voids on mine. I, the grade of carbon fiber is very nice. The, the contouring is super nice. This thing's very comfortable. It's a little bit thinner, so I feel like I just get an amazing grip on this thing, which is certainly one of my favorite aspects of this knife is the ergonomics on the handle are outstanding. There's no hot spots whatsoever on the handle, in hand, gripping it, so very well done. Um, some interesting you know design work that keeps it from being boring. Got some holes here for lightning. Um, balance is right at this kind of first finger choil so it's it's well balanced and lockup is very solid so and you still get that type of action all right um some of the other things one of my favorite another aspect of this knife that i really like is this pocket clip 
So it does use obviously a large ceramic detent ball. It is 3D milled. It has adequate spacing in here for jeans, which is very important to me. And one thing that's really cool, we're gonna lift up on the pocket clip here, is this ball. You can see that line on there, it's moving. The ball actually moves. So as this is going in and out of your pocket, the, the ceramic D temple actually rotates in this housing, which is a super cool feature. I don't know that I've seen it done this way before. I've seen, you know, other custom makers use like a, a roller style, you know, like a conveyor belt type of roller system, but I think this is the first time I've seen a free moving ceramic ball like this. If, if there's another, and again, the ball rotates. I've seen quite a few where the ball doesn't rotate. Um, but if there's one that I missed, let me know. But again, pocket clip doesn't have any hot spots, perfectly rounded, just an exceptionally functional clip. And uh, nothing kills a good, nothing kills a knife for me like a clip that's not usable. So um, really appreciate the design and the thought that went into this clip and the fact there's no hot spots. Can't get near the tip of the edge. Can't get near a sharpened edge back here either. A little bit of milling here in the carbon fiber for the flipper tab. And then again, they cut the show side a little bit lower so you can easily access the liner lock. So, anyways, I mean that's that's pretty much the Hornet 2.0. Um, I haven't tried the Hornet 1.0, the smaller one, but um, again, I, I really enjoy this one for late night walks or if I need kind of a, a larger knife in my pocket that's going to carry well and be fairly lightweight. Uh, this is a great option to go for. Again, the 0452 by ZT. Also a great option to go for. You know, I, I think... Not that there's really anything in similar in terms of design, but in terms of a, a large, lightweight, very effective knife with really good ergonomics, I think these two have a, a lot in common in a good way. So, yeah. All right, so I think that's pretty much it on the Hornet 2.0. Um, I'll put a link to um, Sean's website, Tepe Designs, just like on the logo here, .com, so you guys can see what he has going on. Um, you know, when he does runs with, with the machine shop that he utilizes or the factory, it's not quite a large factory, but the machine shop he uses, he's doing smaller runs because, you know, it takes a lot of capital to get large runs done, and he just doesn't have a lot of capital to utilize, so they're pretty much smaller runs right now, but when one run is complete and he has it in hand, then he'll probably start another run at that point. So even though these are coming in June and a lot of them have already sold, there might be only handfuls left. Once that's done, he'll do another run. So if you're interested in this one and maybe you can't snag one in June, just stay in contact with Sean and he'll let you know when the next run is coming. Obviously with all the events in the world right now, there's, there's definitely shipping delay and production delays and other unforeseen events that might happen. But uh, things are definitely coming. So um, let me check my notes for anything else. Um, uh, yes, as far as the design work goes, um, Elijah Isham was instrumental in helping him with the CAD work, so he definitely wanted to mention that um, on some of these designs. So anyways, that'll do it. Again, this is the Tepe Designs Hornet 2.0. You can check out some of his other models like the Killage, which um, I did a video on way back in the day really cool looking design as well and uh, if you like Sean and want to support him get in touch with him and he'll let you know when when knives are coming and so forth so anyways thanks again for watching follow me on Instagram for daily content and I will see you guys soon take care